Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. O Lord, I've heard of thy speech and I was afraid. Lord, I've heard, give me KJV. Lord, I've heard of thy speech. I have heard of thy speech and I was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. We were on the mountain of uh, the mystery of the seventh man. And uh, yesterday, Monday, we dealt with rest. Yesterday, we dealt with settlement. Today is the third day. Is, uh, we are dealing with prayer and fasting. For any results to come, there must be prayer. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 5. If there is something you should never ignore or stay away from is prayer. Praise the Lord. Then my God, then my God put into my heart to gather the nobles the rulers and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found written in it. The next verse. Sorry, the man seven. Okay, yeah, good. Six. These are the people of the province who came back from the captivity of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had carried away, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city. Now, let me lay this foundation first. In the seventh month, fasting and prayer is important. It is the ladder of accessing the higher dimension. Let's take this scripture, Nehemiah 7, Nehemiah 8 again. Nehemiah 8 chapter 18. Nehemiah 8, 18. Praise God. It says, also day by day, from the first day until the last day, he read from the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day, there was a sacred assembly according to the prescribed manner. Verse 19. It says, now on the 24th day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting in sackcloth and with dust on their head. Fasting. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I want you to pay attention because prayer or fasting without prayer is starving. There is power that emanates from fasting and prayer. The devil fears a fasting person. Amen. Since Jesus left, before Jesus left, one day they asked Jesus, the Pharisees asked Jesus, how come your disciples don't fast? He said the disciples of John fasted. But your disciples are eating the head of the wheat, the head of the corn. Jesus said, while the bridegroom is around, they fasted not. But say, but time is coming. When the bridegroom shall ascend, then they shall fast. I have heard of these teachings whereby people say Jesus fasted for us. There's no need of fasting. That's a wrong thing. Amen. Fasting without prayer and prayer without fasting. Fasting without prayer is starvation. And prayer without fasting is lack of power. If you want things to move, you pray and fast. Divine encounters come quickly on the mountain of fasting and prayer. Amen. So when Jesus ascended, he ushered us into the realm of fasting. According to Matthew chapter 2 verse 20. He ushered men into the place of fasting and prayer. 
If the enemy wants to quench your spiritual fire, it quenches your prayer life and your fasting life. Because prayer and fasting rejuvenates or refires the fire in you. Matthew 2.20. So anytime there is no fasting, then there is no inner power. The devil can play around you all that he wants. Can I hear an amen here? So fasting gives you speed. Fasting gives, there's no Matthew 2. Okay, let me read from my Bible. Matthew chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 19, Matthew 2. 220. It says, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who saw the child's life are dead. Amen. From that time, men were ushered. Luke 5.35. Very fast. Luke 5.35. Luke 5.35. It says, say, but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Now, Jesus already ascended. There. The Pharisees were asking him, how come your disciples are not fasting? They are eating from Monday to Monday. Disciples of John were living a fasted life. He said, the bridegroom is around. How can they fast? He said, but when I will go, they will be ushered into the days of fasting. And we are living in those days. Praise God. Matthew chapter 9 verse 15. We are living in those days of fasting. The bridegroom ascended. Now we are here. That is where the disciples of Jesus, the moment Jesus ascended, Jesus told them, now you must be endued with power. Luke chapter 1 verse 8. Bible says, and Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom, mourn? Go, <laughs> go back. Matthew 9. Go back again. Matthew 9. 15. It says, and Jesus said to them, can the, bride, the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. And then they will fast. So when Jesus was taken, he gave them a rule. He told them, don't do anything else. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He says, don't go anywhere else. Go to Jerusalem. He said, and you shall be endued with power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. But before that, don't go anywhere. Because and the moment Jesus left, the disciples went straight to the upper room. From that day, they fasted for 10 days. Power came upon them. He says, but now shall you see power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness to me, witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Why is it that Christians are not walking in dimensions of wealth, prosperity, and power? It's because they lack a fasting system. A fasting system. Fasting kills your flesh and empowers your spirit. Fasting kills your flesh and empowers your spirit. Fasting is the platform for breakthrough. You don't access breakthrough anyhow. Fasting is the platform. Bible says in the book of Isaiah 58 verse 6, say, is this not the fast that I desire? Amen. So it gives them, it says in verse 8, it says when you fast, then shall your light break forth as the morning. Verse 8. It says, so shall the light break forth like morning. So, your light breaks forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord. So, the glory of God comes. Things break forth because of fasting. You can have a major breakthrough in business by your fasting life. Fasting is not only for spiritual energy or only for people in ministry. 
Fasting also is for if you want a divine intervention. Are you with me now? Praise God. There is no one who can go up. No one can go up without paying the price of fasting. <laughs> Let me say this. You remain on ground level as long as you don't have a fasting life. Bible says food for the stomach, stomach for food. And God will destroy them both. He said, warn to you, if your prince eats in the morning. But blessed are you if your prince eats at the right time. Not for drunkenness, but for strength. So, prince who are not permitted to wake up with food. Even today, in royal nations, the prince does not wake up with breakfast. He wakes up with assignment. He eats later. Amen. It is Africa we are told. You wake up. You must download. Kaba. I was in Nigeria. I saw them eat breakfast. They don't take breakfast. They eat breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take they don't take there's no tea in Nigeria there's, there's no tea it is they wake up with food so ask this man we in this hotel ask them where is breakfast he said what breakfast it's breakfast when you went to check breakfast there was no omelette or what you are seeing fufu here eba semo draw say ah this is food he said, yes in Nigeria we eat food we don't take tea tea is my English man's food. I say, Kenya will take tea. <laughs> my mother-in-law my mother lives in the U.S. She told me, most white people don't sit down to take breakfast. Somebody will take a cup of coffee and run. It is Africa. But before anything, oh yeah, we wake up. Sometimes before we shower. What's on the table? Where's my breakfast? You can kill your wife. Because she did not put breakfast. He said, what to you if your prince eats in the morning? That thing made me determine when I take breakfast. I read that scripture in Ecclesiastes. I said, so it, it is not, I'm not saying it is wrong. So don't wake up and see bread. They say, what to you? No, it's not wrong. Just that, that should not be what is in your head. That should not be a priority. That should not be, before anything starts, I must scatter food. Amen. There are days I eat my breakfast in the evening. I eat my breakfast at two. Why? It is no priority. Amen. Praise God. You have to pay the price of fasting if you are to ascend in certain dimensions. Fasting is a spiritual life charger. When you fast, you are energized. Fasting makes you go faster. Fasting twists and brings the arm of God towards you. Fasting makes you attract divine attention. You cannot attract God anyhow. Are you hearing me? There must be fasting. When the day Hannah wanted a child, she went and prayed, offered sacrifice. It was tradition. After offering sacrifice, they sit down, they eat. That day, she did not eat. She stood up. That's why Hannah told her, eat. Am I not better than 10 sons? You, say, you don't know what you're saying. She did not eat food. She stood up went back to pray. It was in that fasting season that bam, baby came. There are certain doors. Jesus said, search go ahead not, lest by prayer and fasting. There are demons that do not respect how many prayer points to release. They only respect the moment you afflict your soul in fasting. Amen. 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 Let me tell you, if there is something you are enjoying now that God is doing for you, Imagine if you added a little more prayer and fasting. God will do double of that. Praise God. Can I hear better? Amen. amen. Fasting is the platform for divine visitation. Anyone that had an encounter with God had a fasting life. Isaiah 58 verse 9. Isaiah 58 verse 9. There must be a divine visitation. He says, then you shall call now. In verse 8. Six, we saw God saying, is this not the fast I require? In verse eight, it says, then your light will break forth. 
in verse 9 said, then you shall pray call. So fasting is what energizes you or gives you power or it gives you platform to call on God. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the and speaking wickedness. So when I am in fasting and prayer and I call on God, there's a direct line to heaven. Are you hearing me? Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Fasting is that platform that you need and things break forward. Somebody's life is going to change. Amen. Exodus 34 verse 27. Exodus 34. The Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, write these words down. Words of the, oh, write these words. For according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. The next verse. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread or drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, 10 commandments. So he wrote the 10 commandments. Why? He was on the mountain of fasting and prayer. You don't ascend until you're a fasting person. The kuna mali do outa ipita. No matter how much you pray, there's a realm you don't cross until there's fasting, the mystery of fasting in your life. The next verse, it says verse 29. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of testimony were in, in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone like he talked with God. His skin was shining. Literally, there was glory on his, on, on, his, on, his, on his body. The man's face, the man's body was shining. The glory of God became, that's what the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among men in John chapter 1. The word became flesh. So, the man stayed with God for 40 days, but the time was coming out. He did not come out as, as, as Moses. He came down as a God. That's why God told him, I've made you a God unto Pharaoh. Bible said, don't you know that I've made thee God, but you shall die like mere men. When you live in the realm of men, you die like men. Are you hearing me? There's a realm you are sent and your things work. Even the devil fears you. Let me say this. If you see where the devil torments you, you're in the same level. In the same level. Where the devil can just enter your dream, boom, 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 attack you, then get out. Hey, unchallenged. In the same level. Matter of fact, he might be higher than you. The devil has access into your life. He enters at will, torments you with a dream. Then at the same time, he walks out. Hey! For where? What realm are you that the devil can enter and come out? The last time I dreamt, see you, I'm in the village. Since I'm where? It's a long time. When I go to sleep, I snore like a rich man. Are you hearing me? Uh -uh. It is God I see, not devil. Oh, I saw myself in the mountain falling. Falling from where? Devil, we are on the same level. Bible says we are, we are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. Far above. So where I'm seated with Christ, the devil cannot come. This one, the devil enters. Sleep to do, have sex, 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 three hours. He wears his trousers, gets out. Ah! Which league are you in? Which level are you in? Ah, no, let, let's look at scripture. Bible says we are seated with Christ, far above principalities and powers. We are seated, not standing. So, which level is this one? A devil enters your life in the night. <laughs> Is it not Matthew 13, 25? Say, while men slept, his enemies came. For the enemy to come. Now, Bible says, God has made the devil to be under our... So, he's under your foot. The devil is under here. Meaning he's lower than you. When did he climb? Until now. He can enter your dream life. And your dream life... Is your spiritual life. Are you understanding me? So you can enter, inject, get out. <laughs> Matthew said, but while men slept, his enemies came and saw tears and, it, and went his way. The devil came, raped you in the dream, then went away. Unchallenged. Which realm are you in? Which level are you in? I don't know if I'm talking here. Hey, I want you to know 
Revelation 1, verse 10. Look at this. I love this scripture. Revelation 1, 10. I was in the spirit. Where? I was where? I was where? I was where? I was where? Not in the flesh. On the last day. And I hide behind me. A loud voice. Isaiah 30. 23. It says when you turn to the left. Or to the right. You shall hear a voice. Say. This is the way. Ezekiel 2.2. 2. Bible says. <laughs> and the spirit entered me. How does the demon then the spirit entered me when he spoke to, he spoke to me. So I was on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit. Madam, you can't be in the, in the spirit if you feed your flesh too much. Bible says, whoever sows of the flesh shall reap of the flesh. Whoever sows in the spirit shall reap of the spirit. For it shall become an incorruptible seed. For the devil to come who is under your foot, enter your dream, torment you, slap you, hang you, take you to the village, put you in his car, transport you to your village, then in your village, flog you, flog you again, then flog you, before 5 a.m., carry you back, put you in his car, bring you back to your bed, that devil is a bastard. Wow, go happy. <laughs> First thing, Pulls you into the realm of the spirit. You're always spiritual. Are you hearing me? I discovered there's a realm you live. You don't know about you having sex in the dream, eating. What are you eating? That shows you how much you love food. You eat the physical, then you eat the spirit. That shows you how much food has taken over. Are you hearing me? Praise God. One day I was sleeping. And then I think it was a dream. Oh, I don't know. At a, I saw I was somewhere and uh, I was somewhere that people are fighting. And then I was in the middle and this people wanted to beat me. In the dream, I told them, do you know I'm bigger than you? Stronger than you. Get out! And I woke up. In the dream, they scattered. Where did they enter the now? Somebody else will interpret. Hey, demonic mob justice. Mob justice who? You see what? When you feed your flesh, you empower your lust. Can I repeat? When you feed your flesh, you empower your lust. The first lust is the lust of the flesh. Second last is the last of money. The third last is the last sexual last. Amen. Are we together here? Well, as we know, when you fast, even words are few. Today you can count how many people you talk to. Right? Uh, talk to me now. Why are you angry? Who <laughs> got How is my brother? I'm fine. It's all well. Thank you, Jesus. Let's meet in church. The day you have eaten three meals, you talk like a parrot. Your flesh is empowered. Your last is empowered. He says, love not the world or the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the last of the flesh, the last of the eye, and the pride of life. For whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Are you hearing me? So, lack of fasting empowers your flesh. One day a young man in this church came and told me, man of God, I'm struggling with masturbation. I said, hey. he said, sir, in a day, I do it five times. So no problem. God will help you. He said, oh, what, do I, what do I do? I say, in the next three days, take a fast. And for the next, th no, seven days, you only take coffee, black tea. In the evening, seven days. He said, but I will die. He said, die, we'll raise you up. Seven days, don't take food. Is that issue? I said, yes. So, what about this thing I told you? He said, leave it. That's what I'm telling you to fast. 
After seven days, come and see me. The man fasted, fasted, fasted. On the seventh day, he finished fasting. He never came to me. Two weeks, he never came. So one day I saw him in church. He said, come, come here. Uh, there was an assignment I gave you, say, sir. After that fasting, that thing died. I don't know where it went. It just, I stopped. I don't know how it stopped. I said, good. So flesh so was submitted to the spirit. Fasting deals with your flesh. Fasting opens your spiritual antennas. Empowers your spiritual man. Can I hear an amen here? Can I hear a better amen? As I conclude this, everyone must ascend on the mountain of fasting and prayer. Everybody must ascend on the mountain of fasting and prayer. Let me tell you, if you fear to fast, then there's no way you're going. Fasting and prayer go hand in hand and it opens the heavens for the release of the blessing. If there's a break, blessing you're waiting for, there's a breakthrough you're expecting, fasting is the platform that opens heaven. Second Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29 verse 10 to, verse to, to 14. It opens up the heaven. The moment you engage in fasting, your heavens will open. Amen. Now, there's something the devil does. The devil will allow you to fast, but will not allow you to pray. Therefore, David blessed the, therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord, God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. The next verse. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In, in your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise you, your glorious name. 14. But who am I and who are my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly as this. For all things that come from you and of your own, we have given to you. Amen. Fasting is offering yourself to God for the blessings you desire. Stand on your feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Time of fasting and prayer is a time of going up. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. Fasting is a time of ascending to the mountain of the Lord. Amen. He said in Revelation 4 verse 1. He says, after these things I looked. And behold a door standing open in the heaven. And the first voice which I heard. Was like a trumpet speaking with me saying. Come up. He did that. So prayer and fasting is a type of going up. You ascend. You go up. You move from the earthly realm to spiritual realm. It is possible. It is possible. Fasting is a time you ascend, you go up on every area. Let me tell you, many people till today have not known the power of fasting. Of fasting. I will tell you something. It is not in the calendar of Christians to fast for 40 days. It is in the calendar of the Muslims to take 40 days in a year. Why? Those 40 days, they keep ascending. They keep ascending. Somebody is ascending for 40 days. When will it take you? How long will it take you to reach that person? That's why the sons of Ishmael are stronger every day than the sons of Isaac. Are you hearing me? Because the sons of Isaac, we are not fasting people. Somebody was asking me, Papa, are you serious? We are going to fast for seven days. Naibaridi. <laughs> the sons of Isaac, we are afraid of fasting. Are you with me? The sons of Ishmael. And they, three times, they must enter the temple. The moment they bow, they ascend. They bow, they ascend. They bow, they ascend. 40 days on the mountain. You seven days are today. I know Thomas had problem. Fasting is not doing it willingly. You do it sacrificially. Fasting is the time you afflict your flesh. And you enter that God. I want this thing to happen. Amen. 